All right, guys, we are going to start the conversation on creating generational wealth. Uh, I hope you guys love this as much as I did. You'll probably go back and listen to it a multitude of times. This is my fourth time going through it, and I've got so many more notes. This is one that you want to listen, digest, listen, digest, and then apply because there's so many amazing things in here. So with that, I'm going to throw it over to Chad and see what Chad took down for notes today. Wow. <clears throat> Amazing. And, and I love the way she framed things and said things. It's literally the first time I've heard thing, a lot of things said in that way. And it's going to stick. I, I literally have 17 points, but I'm only going to go through less than half of those. I got to leave a couple for Tay and Joel. <laughs> so um, the first thing I'll say, and this, and this is so important. If you haven't, if you haven't gone through this process yet, it's super, super important. Gifts, she said, gifts and talents make appearances in our lives. See, what some of us don't realize is that who we are is different than who everyone else is. So I think it's important for us to first recognize, I think a lot of people go through their whole lives and they've never pinpointed, they've never really put their finger on what their specific gifts and talents are. You know, back in, I was probably close, I was actually older than 30, and I went to this church, and this pastor there was doing a class called Destiny and Calling. And all we did in that Destiny and Calling class is we took personality, you guys have probably all taken the color personality test. Well, there's all these different types of tests out there that will, that you can take that will help you understand who you are, where your passions are, where your giftings and your talents and things are. Like, it's not, everyone doesn't in high school uh, just start thinking about how they're going to eventually become a millionaire. Like that's just not, it's not the way everyone thinks. And for me, it was a way that I thought, and it was a way that I was just geared. Uh, some would call it predisposition. So, um, you know, she talked about how when she was younger, she was always out negotiating, right? Everyone's not a good negotiator, right? So that was a, a talent or a gifting of hers. And, she said, naturally, true leadership role as the oldest. Some of our giftings and talents come from our circumstances. Uh, I'm the oldest of four. And so I feel like for me, I, I, was, I was put in situations where I had to have some natural, you know, where, where leadership was grown into me because I was the oldest. So I was taking care of my younger siblings, sometimes doing things like that. So as you kind of analyze your, your life a little bit, you'll start to see these little droppings of how you got to where you are now and, and, and the giftings and the talents behind that. So that was the first point I want to make access to God's wisdom, you know, in Proverbs four, seven, I think it is. From, it, it talks about how um, the importance of getting wisdom, you know, and, and so how do we get wisdom? Well, it's by the people we know and the books we read or the podcasts we listen to. You guys are here right now. Hopefully you got a lot of wisdom today. You're changed. I, I know I'm changed after hearing this. And so it's important for us to pursue personal development always to continue to grow. grow. Growth happens naturally till we're 18. And isn't it interesting that at just about the same time we stop naturally growing and getting taller, we get done with the, the, the forced, the education process that's forced upon us. And, and so many people right there just say, well, uh, it's, the growth isn't being forced anymore, so I'm done. And how much more can we learn from 18 to 36 to 72 and beyond? So I think you guys are in the right place, just understanding that, that growth and access to God's wisdom. You know, and I mean, she was, I thought it was so interesting working at the front desk at a strip club and she's reading, you know, 30 days of becoming a woman of prayer. I was like, wow. But she was just following what, and she didn't know how she got that book, but she just, she was a, she's a woman of action. She has an idea and she pursues the idea. And that's, I think that's such a huge clue. Um, dad, she said, dad dissected her gifts and talents. You know, in this business of it works, it's important. The more that you get around people, the more that you understand the diversity of people, the more you recognize the talents and giftings of people. You know, a lot of people come into this business and let's say you're a very red personality. Maybe you've surrounded yourself with mostly red personalities or just like you. When you start to understand the value of people and how different, how their strengths are different than your strengths. You start to see in people, you meet people and you go, oh, wow, 
this person is a an crazy encourager, or this is one of those bubbly people. They walk in the room and it lights it up. They smile. And even the, the, the nastiest person, it cuts right through like butter and helps them relax too. That's a gift, right? Um, I love in business, you can tell if it's working. We have this thing called E-Suite. You just look in the back office and you say, where's my GV at? Is it, has it gone up since yesterday? Has it gone up since last month? Has it gone up since last year? I mean, that's a true measure of if it's working, right? And of course we work, it works. It work. We should call a company at works, Joel. Well, anyway. Um, so just a few more here. Build your confidence. You know, one thing that stuck with me years ago when it works was this idea of we need to uh, grow ourselves in the area of belief as often as we can. We have to grow ourselves and we have to grow our team constantly. We have to help them believe that it works is the best company in the industry, that this is an industry that's worth pursuing despite the rejection that we get. We have to build belief in the products. We have to use the products. You become a product of the product. You know, you, you have to stay in touch with your customers and get their testimonials back because as their excitement grows, your excitement grows. And most importantly, we have to build belief in ourselves because you have to believe in yourself to be able to believe in other people. It's so important. And in the beginning, for a lot of us, including me, it was hard to believe in ourselves. So we had to be around a lot of people that believed in us until we agreed with what they saw in us. And then we can go on, we can pass that on. It's duplication, right? Go, go around people who believe in you. That will help you believe in yourself. If you're around people that don't believe in you, you have to, you have to start, you have to give them the, uh, the stiff arm, you know, like uh, King, what do they call him on the Titans? King Henry, right? You see some of the stiff arms he gives, man. Bam, they people go fly in 10 yards. But we have to, some of those people, we need to give the stiff arm because they are tearing us down. People in our lives are building us up or they're tearing us down and you have to recognize the difference. And my recommendation is spend more time with people building you up than you do with the people tearing you down and understand and make sure you're only building up and not tearing down because otherwise, you know, it's just this business. What are you doing? If you spend part of your time building up and the other part tearing down, you you know, if you're kind of treading water there, that might be a clue. Uh, put wealth in other people's pockets. See, that's her mentality when she's building these businesses. How can I serve? You know, the, the uh, greatness, um, service to many leads to greatness. That's like, a, that, that's like a theme, right? That's all throughout the Bible. That's all throughout being an entrepreneur. Service to many. We have, we have the opportunity here to serve, you know, hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands. That will help lead to greatness. The more, the more people that we help hit their goals, it just helps us in the long run. I'll do a couple more here. She said, uh, will you choose to be the backbone to your family? And I love that because it's not an accidental thing. You don't go, oh, wow, I accidentally became the backbone of my family. It's a, it's a decision that gets made. It's like, it's like that, this, that word decide. You know, there's homicide, death to someone else. There's suicide, death to self. And there's that word decide. Every single one of us can decide today that we are going to be the backbone of our family, that we are going to be the first in our family. Maybe no one in your family's ever made, had a month ever where they made $10,000. And you decide today that you're going to have a month in your business that you make $10,000. You're going to be the first out of your whole entire family, right? I was the first to, to get a college a bachelor's degree in, in my entire family. I think I was the first to make multiple six figures in, in my family. And so you can do all those things that you choose to do. That's, that's what's so great about being a human being. And then the last one I'll talk about, um, will you be the first to change your family tree? Are you using, kind of circle all back to gifts and talents, are you using your gifts and talents or are you burying them? Again, this is a, a choice. Inaction is a choice. Sticking our head in the sand is a choice. Doing nothing is, it, is just as much of a choice as going after something, right? It's, it's a choice, and I hope you get that. And so if nothing else out of the today, get the fact that you should believe in something and you should run hard after that something and make decisions in your life that put you out there to where you're going to go. So if it's, you know, New Year's resolutions, whatever, just let this be the year that you run towards something, right? And uh, Joel, again, I, I probably never would have, 
I mean, I'd heard of the Sprinkle of Jesus app, but I never had even thought about who was behind that or what. And I'm so encouraged today, again, just to hear another person that was out there in the world that at such a young age was able to overcome so much. Man, it just makes me so excited to think of her and her dad just sitting there brainstorming. And he's like, honey, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. She's like, yeah, dad, yeah, dad. And look at her now, five businesses, 26 years old. I mean, surely we can go out and get some emerald bonuses and help a lot of people get some emerald bonuses, right? So let's go out and do it. And just, man, if you need encouragement and your team, have everybody listen to this. It's on Ed Milet, YouTube, go out there. One of the best things you can do is just have people that you love and care about get inspired by understanding that these types of stories are possible. And if it's possible for one, it's possible for everyone because God is not a respecter of person. So if he'll, if he'll put his extra on someone else's natural, he'll put his extra or his super on your natural too. So I want to go across the other 50, you know, 15 points. I'm going I'm to leave some on the bone for you, Joel, and for Tay. That's awesome. Uh, I, I love that because of the fact that when, when you think about it, it is something that's so important that if you just look at the three of us here and then you take her story and then you take Ed Milet's story, well, there's five people that are perfect examples of it never should have happened. So if it never should have happened to any of us, well, the never should have happened to you could happen to you. You just have to make that decision. Uh, Tay, what do you have written down? Man, I have a lot written down with a lot of extra thoughts roaming in my head. So I'm going to try to contain all that and stick to my three points uh, so that I can leave you some, Joe. Uh, I think it was just so good on so many levels, just within her personal testimony here and how she inspires Ed and just seeing the relationship between her having to negotiate with her mom because she was, uh, like you said, her mom was a kid raising a kid along with what eight other siblings and then seeing how uh, her dad and her kind of rekindled their relationship and that just took on a whole new meaning within itself. So uh, just so much, but the first thing that I, like she said, that really stuck out to me, she said, uh, success has a history. There's a receipt to everything. And I was like, wow, uh, how many times that many people look back in their past and they have a lot of regrets. They have a lot of things that they're holding on to that they're bitter about. And uh, when she said like success has a history for me, it was like, take inventory of your past take inventory of the past mistakes that you made, the failures that you made, and understand a, a mistake is valuable if you do three things with it. If you admit it, if you learn from it, and you correct it. If you do those things, then you can use it to your advantage and understand like everything that you went through was building you, was strengthening you, was giving you everything that you're going to need uh, in the future. Understand that, like you don't have to be bitter about it because you can get better because of it. Uh, so that just kind of shaped my uh, mentality, just looking back and some of the things that I really didn't like uh, when I was a kid or in college or in high school and like, why didn't I like it at that moment? What did I feel like in that moment? What could I have seen differently that would allow me to along my path that I can apply to my today? Uh, so that just really stuck out to me. Uh, the second thing that she said, and Ed kind of uh, led her into it, uh, and she said, think outside of yourself. Uh, and then Ed said, clearly define the market that you're trying to serve. Uh, and I love that because me personally, I, I love to do the quick videos. I've, I've been doing it for a long time. I kind of did it and burned myself out and had to learn the lesson of it so I can come back and do it in a new way. And I started doing it again and uh, because I know I love to do it because I hear the feedback from the people, how it's helping them. Uh, and it was funny because I did one uh, date my day five and I spoke and I said, uh, you are not your thoughts. You are the one listening to them. Uh, so stop playing, re stop replaying failed scenarios and feeding self-doubt. And I got, a, I got a call from an old college teammate uh, and he said, man, thank you for that message of day five. I needed to hear that because I just took uh, my real estate exam and I failed. And when I heard you say, stop playing refail scenarios, I understood like if I have to take this test 100 times, then I would do so. And what really got my attention was uh, he went on talking about failing that exam. What it led into is he said, this year, I need to take time for myself. This past year, I spent so much time trying to take care of my pregnant wife, he, which is crazy. He has a wife that's pregnant with twins. I thought that was crazy itself. And then they have an eight-month-old child. And they have an eight-year-old daughter. He said, I spent so much time trying to make sure that each one of them got the amount of attention and love that they needed that I kind of put myself on the back burner. And he said, this year, I want to take time to make sure I'm pouring into myself. And the last piece of advice I gave him was, dude, make yourself a priority. Priority. 
Like the reason that you, like there was a reason that God held you back from passing that exam. I said, he's not gonna send the old you into a new situation. Why would he allow you to pass this, this exam knowing that you're gonna go into it and care of everybody else but yourself? So all this is gonna add is a burden on you. You're gonna have this new job. You're gonna be able to have these new promotions, these new things happening, and you're still gonna be lacking the most important thing that you need, the energy, the just the new spirit, the things that are gonna energize you to go into this new season. So I say, look at this as a lesson. Like you already know what you want to do this year, which is invest in yourself. So make, take time this year and make your number one thing is making you a priority. Think about when you get on the plane, the first thing that they tell you before you try to help somebody else put on their mask, put on yours. So like use that example and go into this new season. Understand like if you learn this lesson, God, he has abundance waiting on you. But there's certain things that you need in this season that you need to let go of so you won't let it hinder you in that next season. So for my thing, it was like what she said, like, before you try to change the world, change your community. Speak to the people on your platforms. Facebook, speak to those people who you can directly make an impact with. Instagram, TikTok, the same. Speak to those people and the issues and understand, like, you have a solution for those people, so meet their need. And, and just the last thing that I want to share, which is uh, just... Like I said, her her and her relationship with her dad just kind of sparked something within me because I've been reading uh, this uh, John Wooden book. And for me, I just felt like I was just sitting at his feet learning from because this guy's like full of wisdom. And her dad made me think about John Wisdom because he was just just giving information. He wasn't telling her what to do. He was just giving her advice and let her make her own de decision and think about things herself. And the thing that John Wooden said in this book, he said, teach wisdom, not winning. He said, winning is the byproduct of your character, your hard work, your persistence, and your uh, your faith. And so for me, that really stuck out because her dad was giving her all the tools that she need for her to go out and do the work herself. Uh, so for me, I think you have to clearly define what winning is for you. I love that It Works has taken on uh, this whole this the whole phrase for this year because I think it's important. And for me, yes, that's why I mentioned because Joe's had. So for me, I think you have to clearly define what is winning to you. To me, what I wrote down, what winning is to me, it is the willingness not to accept failure, mediocrity, or less than what I believe I deserve. If I'm doing those things, then I know that I'm winning by my definition. I don't want to win by Joel's definition because I do that, I'm going to burn myself out and I'm going to compare my life and everything going on in my life to Joel's life. And I don't want to, I don't want to let that hinder me because I can't live a life like Joel's because we're in two different positions. But what I can do is learn from Joel. I can take applications that I can apply directly to my life and apply it to my life in a way that, you know, works for me. So uh, the last thing that I will leave with you with, leave you guys with, and I thought this is stuck out to me with everything they were saying is like what you are as a person what you are as a person is more important than any title is more important than any position is more important than anything that anybody can give you so continue to work on your character continue to get yourself right with jesus i love that she put jesus first understand like when that like when that when she like literally made that her first priority that like chad said earlier like the access to the wisdom that she needed all she needed was that card that got her in the door. Once she got the access, you see what she is doing. She said, purpose is on my back. That is because she had the access. She was in alignment. She was walking with the source himself, and that is God. She had that relationship. So uh, if you guys got anything out of this, you have to make God your source. You have to make him your number one priority. You have to put him first in everything that you do, understanding not only are you going to have that success with your business, Think about the relationship with her dad. Think about what she had to go up, go through all the way until they had to rekindle that relationship. So look at the success that it brought her with her relationship with her dad as well. So understanding God, it just don't don't he doesn't doesn't just want to bless you financially, but he wanted to make you rich in your relationships. He wanted to make you rich in every area in your life, but you have to give him the key so that you can have access to get that wisdom and everything that you need. So uh, just so much good here today, and I thank you for holding on to this joke because I think if I would have heard this before, I probably would have. Had a million other things that I wanted to share, but I kind of contained myself to leave you some, man. Oh, God, that was so good. All right, guys. So uh, let's see what's what's left for me. I, I love how she started out with, you have to be bold and confident because that allows you to step into some places that you otherwise would not be able to step into. Having access to godly wisdom, like both Chad and Tay said, is the defining and game-changing key for success. I thought that was just amazing because success has receipts. There's proof of that transaction. It's not just, hey, it, 
it just came to be. It just, it just happened. There's no harvest without the planting of seeds. Uh, with business, there are real results. If you're looking at your business right now, like Chad said, where, where's, my, where's my volume at? Where's my volume at? Well, if you've done nothing this week to increase your volume, why would you expect it to be any different than it was yesterday when you did nothing? So when you're looking for the results, make sure you're taking the action to change the results. But the number one thing that I want to get across here, which I absolutely loved, is you better start a relationship with this guy named Jesus because he's the only reason why we got out of the hole that we were in 10 years ago. Just, I, I love that as a foundational statement, guys. He changed our lives through this opportunity. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, he can do the same for you. Having 42 year old wisdom with 26 year old stamina, guys, that is why this whole generational wealth thing is so incredible because what are you saying what are you pouring into your children to develop that kind of desire, that kind of hunger? And then you're the wisdom to help catapult them into a completely different level. Because most of us focus on what we don't have and what we don't know, it causes paralysis. But if you just go like ignorance on fire, that's what we always say, ignorance on fire will always get results over knowledge on ice. What are you planning for this year? Have you given yourself a goal of what you want to accomplish for the year? That's why we always talk about dream boards and vision boards and goal boards at the end of the year so that when you hit the ground running on January 1st, you already have a plan of action. You have the ability to help and mentor people who are struggling to make it happen. That is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to your team is to show and help them, especially, you know, those of you that are coming on and listening to this because of the fact that you are taking the time to add additional knowledge that you can share to others. Ultimately, it comes down to moving fast. We talk about this all the time. This business doesn't need speed, but it absolutely loves speed. So the faster that you take action and the more action you take, it's more seeds planted for a larger harvest. As an entrepreneur, you have to stand for something. That's what differentiates you from everybody else out there. So what are the things that you are talking about to differentiate yourself from somebody else? You do not have to have brilliant ideas, guys. That is why I love this business and why I've talked about this for so long. We have a system. We have a blueprint for success. We have the steps to success. All you have to do is apply your spin, your personality, your hustle to it in order to get the results. It's not the steps to nowhere. It's not the steps to failure. It's the steps to success. Why? Because they've created success for thousands of people. It's proven, it's tried, and it's been shown to produce success and results as long as you consistently and persistently do it. Man, I, I can keep going. Sorry, guys. I know there's lots of stuff on here. Uh, you have the ability to change your family tree for generations. You just have to make the decision. They're in every single family, their history, their lineage, their family tree can point to somebody who made the decision. If you can't find that person in your family tree that made a decision to change the trajectory of the family, why not you? It could be up to you. It could be God created you for that purpose to change the way that your family is for generations to come. Also, you could be planting seeds for trees that you would never rest under. You may not see the success or the generation changing things happen in your lifetime, but you could set it up for your children to change. 
That's why this conversation is creating generational wealth because it may not change for your specific generation. The seeds that you plant today could be harvested by your children and your children's children, but you have to plant the seeds in order for there to be a harvest. Are you mindful of the time that you have on this earth? You know, becoming self-aware of how much time you actually have to accomplish things. That is why so many people have such a sense of urgency because they have a lot of things that they want to accomplish and they know that they don't have a lot of time to do it. So create that sense of urgency, create that deadline for yourself of when you want things to get accomplished so that you can work and hustle towards that 100% hustle equals winning. I love the conversation of how amazing it is for not only women, but minorities to be an entrepreneur. Guys, that's why this business that we have is so unbelievable. Do you see how many women are winning with our business? How many minority women are blowing it up in this business? Guys, this is a huge thing because of the fact that this can change the landscape of everything for generations to come. And having Dana Chanel speak directly to women and minorities has changed the trajectory for thousands. And that's what I love about this is we have the ability not to just impact the people that look like us, but we have the ability to impact and inspire the people that look completely opposite to us. For the three of us here, we're not women, so we can't understand or fathom some of the things that you as women have to go to, but we want to help and encourage and speak life into you to take these principles, and that's why we bring people on like this that have the, the correct words to say, to inspire, and to motivate you, because sometimes we may fall short, and we don't ever want to leave you hanging, so we'll bring the people in to bring the right words and the right statements to help change your life, which is ultimately what it comes down to. Everything God has given to you is not designed for you. It's designed for you to go out and reach and change someone else's life. So guys, take this information, go out and apply it, and hopefully you will use this to not only change your life, and change the generation of your family, but you will use it and apply it to change the generation of others around you. Go out and make it an awesome week. We'll see you here again next time.